What's going on E39 Source? How are you guys doing? Today we are going to be uh, doing a pretty big project here. Uh, this is my 2000 uh, M5 as you can see um, and we're going to be attempting to retrofit park distance control on this car. Uh, this car did not come with any uh, park distance control so no rear sensors um, so this is a pretty um, lengthy project. Uh, there's quite a bit that needs to be done but I think I've gathered everything I need to do this, so um, let's go ahead, I guess I'll start summarizing this. Uh, basically BMW does have a DIY, um, I guess, like document on how to do this, so I'll put that in the description, it's pretty useful, uh, kind of gives you a summary of everything that needs to be done, um, but let's talk parts I guess first. So in addition to eight sensors, obviously there's four in the front, four in the rear, uh, which I have in this bag right here, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, you need quite a bit of other uh, parts. So, for example, um, the PDC is initiated by either putting your car in reverse or if you want to just manually initiate it, you can use the PDC button. So, this is the switch panel that's uh, right above the cup holders inside the car. Um, and currently, the one I have does not have uh, the PDC button because it doesn't have PDC. So, so I had to get this one uh, online. You can check on eBay for these. Uh, and again, I'll post all the part numbers and stuff you may need in the description, but I'll go through an overview of everything I have. Uh, this is the PDC module. Um, you absolutely do need this. Um, you're going to need to get one that has these three connectors, um, the black, the white, and the blue. Um, and there's many part numbers for these. I'm still not sure what the correct part number is. I believe anything with these three connectors will work. Um, so, I mean, this is the part number I have on mine. I'll let you guys know how it goes. Um, but you're going to need that. Uh, you're also going to need a rear uh, gong speaker. This will go above the rear deck. Um, and we'll be wiring this, not using this, but um, this will also need to be wired. Um, so, yeah, this is what's going to make the beeps when you put your car in reverse and your, se your rear sensors are detecting something. Um, and I guess the three main uh, harnesses that you're going to need. So, the front sensors, well, let me start by saying this module is located uh, right behind here. We're going to be mounting it somewhere here. Um, I'll let you know later on, but um, everything has to connect to this module. So, there's three main cable harnesses. This is for the front sensors. This is the main power harness that runs throughout the car. Uh, and this is the rear uh, sensor. You can see it has a white connector. Um, so, they're all plugged into here, um, corresponding to their color. So, let's start with the front cable harness. So this is going to need to go um, start at your front bumper and end up here. So that's quite a task. You're going to have to run that through the firewall uh, from the front bumper through the car um, and get it back here. Um, so I guess we can start by talking where this main power cable harness uh, will be run. Like I said, this is the cable, this is the harness that BMW sells. BMW, by the way, still sells all these parts. Um, as of me making this video, this was about $40 from them. It's just a harness, and like I said, it's going to run throughout the entire car. Um, so it's going to start here in the trunk, uh, connected to the PDC module. This is the black connector that goes into that. Um, and once you are here, uh, as you can see, there's um, this is where a lot of the cables are grounded to the car. So you're just going to have to slide them in. There's a ground pin here in the harness somewhere. Uh, I believe it is the brown one. I believe it's this one and it just slides into here and that'll give you the ground um, once you're done with here like I said PDC module is going to be mounted these are jumper cables it's going to be mounted here where these two uh, studs come out so it's going to plug into there it's going to go inside the car and we're basically going to have to run the wires uh, from here to the front of the car uh, but before we do that the rear gong speaker that I said you needed to have, it's actually located under the rear deck up here. So the rear deck's going to have to come out. Um, it screws into the rear deck and then you're going to have to get it power through the harness. So one of the cables is going to have to run up there. And then the rest of the harness is going to run along the passenger side of the car. Once you get up here, so you run it through here and once you get here, it's going to go into the glove box. Um, there's the fuses in the glove box that it has to plug into. Um, I don't have them off the top of my head. I do have it on my sheet. 
Um, but I'm just giving you kind of like a general overview of where all these cables have to run. Um, so after the glove box, um, there's going to be a couple more cables that are going to be run across the dashboard. And this is the uh, button switch panel that I was talking about here. So right now, as you can see, mine just says Sport, and DSC, and then the heated seats. So once I replace that button panel, there's a connector that's back there, and you're going to have to plug in two pins, I believe, um, to give power to this uh, switch panel here. And then finally, once you do that, you're going to have to continue running it under the driver's footwell and there's just one more plug that has to plug into the front gong speaker um, in the driver's footwell area so that's what I'm going to be doing in this segment of the DIY so I guess we're going to start um, with the cable harness um, I was thinking it'd be easiest to start it here um, and then run two cables back to the trunk and then one up to the rear deck. So I'm gonna just kind of brainstorm and, and begin that process and I'll let you know where I get. So um, I've begun removing the rear deck. Um, so I guess like a brief overview of how to do that. So if you have split folds, um, this is the way to do it. If you don't have split folds, it's very similar. Um, you're just gonna have to remove the rear seats, which actually you can remove the rear bench fairly easily. You get a hand down here, pull up. There's just clips that hold these in. Um, so get the rear um, bench out, and then the, I guess the the backrest seats. Um, they just kind of, if you pull them up and then out, they're kind of just like hooked into um, like a fastener back there. So once you get those out, you will have access to this. Um, and this is the trim piece that you gotta remove. Um, there's just. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two, four, six, six, um, little pop rivets that hold them in. Um, this kind of helps out a lot. You just get your tool under there and then pop them out. You'll see what I mean. Um, and then once this is out, um, if you look back here, you have one, two, and three little covers. And then once you take out, uh, I'm trying to get one off right now. Uh, yeah, so you'll just end up with that and just remove all three of them. And then once you do that, the deck just slides out. So I'm going to do that now and I'll let you guys know where I get. So once you get your rear deck down like this, um, it becomes pretty easy access up here. If you want to, for some reason, remove the entire rear deck and get it out of the car for more space. Um, uh, well, one, you can remove this cushion and that cushion. There's just a bolt that holds it in down here. It's kind of hard to see, but if you just undo that bolt, these will come out completely. Um, and to get this out, you have to remove the rear bench and remove the seat belt. Um, the seat belt's from below this bench, and then this will slide out. But for this purpose, this is good enough. So here's where the rear speaker mounts, um, or the rear gong speaker. So there is a, actually this, a piece of sound deadening. Lighting back here sucks, but it's just a square. You will see it. It's already pre-cut um, here, so I was just able to just remove that. It comes out pretty cleanly. And then your speaker will sit. There's a hole already there. It'll sit like this. And if we go to the trunk, you'll see that it comes down. Where is it? Right there. So uh, I do have a little nut that I bought um, for this that screws into that and holds it in place. So pretty easy. Um, like I said, it's just back here next to the third brake light um, on the passenger side. So I'm going to screw that down with the nut and then uh, begin running the cable for that. I think it's going to go along here. You can see where there's other cables already run that go down into the trunk. So um, I'll let you guys know where I get. Okay, so um, to get to the trunk, uh, back to where that sensor or the, the module is going to be, you're going to have to route... Um, couple of these wires so it's going to be the black power cable um, the ground pin like I mentioned which is this right here um, and then the gong speaker uh, plug which is going to stay in here so I figured it's best to start from here like I said run just the two cables to the trunk which is the ground and the power um, the main power uh, plug so I removed the rear speaker it's pretty easy there's just two Phillips screws one uh, screws in here uh, one screws in here. Once you do that, the speaker just unplugs. Um, there's just one connector on it, and then it just pulls out. It's pretty simple. Um, 
And the reason I did that is if you lift this rear sound ending, just be kind of gentle with this stuff. It might just disintegrate in your hands because this stuff's really old. This is a 17 year old car. So just kind of be gentle with this. Uh, mine's actually kind of in decent shape, so it's holding together. But if you get this out of the way and kind of fold it up, um, you can see there's that little slot right there. And where you see that light is actually the trunk of the car. So if you want to run any cables from the trunk up to here, that's where you're going to do it from. And that's where we're going to run the ground cable and the power harness through that hole right there. Um, it's kind of tight, but there's enough room, I believe, to get just both of the cables in without modifying them. So I'm going to try that right now, and I'll let you guys know where I get it. So here are the two cables that we just ran. As you can see, let me get a light up here. Um, that's the hole. You see, if you can kind of see where the, the foam is, that's... On the other side of that is the, the, the rear deck. So you run it through the hole, you'll get him out here. I actually did modify this just to get it through the hole because it's kind of tight. Um, this is the exact same connector, it's just blue. So the way you kind of get this black black piece separate, this will focus with me. The way you just get this disconnected, this is just a blue connector. It's the same exact uh, connector. There's two pieces to it. If you pull this tab back um, like that, and then just pull out the black connector, it'll come out and it'll just make it smaller. Uh, just to get it through that hole and then we can actually um, just reconnect it um, it only goes in one way so once you get that connector um, just back kind of in place um, you might be able just to run it through there but it just kind of made it easier to make it smaller um, this is the ground as you can see there's a bunch of brown grounds here um, that the car just has um, and there's two empty slots so I'll just pick one and then uh, put this in. Before I do that, I'm going to probably run it behind, or maybe a part of this harness back here, so it's just a little cleaner. Um, and yeah, then the next step will be, uh, once we get those two situated, uh, the gong speaker connector, which is this, um, I'll just run it back there and plug it into the gong speaker, and then we'll have to run the remaining five um, pins and cables uh, to the front of the car. So let me just finish up back here, and then we'll move on to the next step. So here's the little harness that you got to plug in your ground, uh, mine's all the way on the right. Um, note that it doesn't go in all the way as the others do because it's just smaller. Um, also I, um, I removed, I just unscrewed it um, from its position here just to make it easier to plug in but it just plugs in on the right side as you can see. Um, I'm just going to go ahead, like I said. Um, there's just one screw that holds it in like that, and then once you get it off, uh, it just makes it easier to plug in your ground. So yeah. Go ahead now and install your PDC bracket uh, along with the module. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. There's just two um, actually studs that come out of the chassis of the car, and then you have these plastic nuts that uh, hold the bracket in place. Um, just note that there's like an arm for the bracket, and it goes behind this wiring harness. So. Um, just make note of that and then I went ahead and plugged in the black power cable back here um, and the ground is all fastened it's the one on the very left there um, so everything back here is set uh, the next step would be to just um, go ahead and just run the the gong speaker uh, cable I'm just gonna run it along the rear deck and plug it into the speaker um, so yeah, I'll let you guys know how that goes so I went ahead and just um, routed the wire under the sound ending material. Uh, comes out right under there. I clipped it in uh, on these two, or under this little clip right here. Runs along this main powering harness and it gets to here. And then once it gets here, uh, it just plugs into the back like so. And then I'm plopping it down uh, on this little spot here. And then once I put the rear deck on, um, I'll be able to secure it from the trunk. Um, so yeah, so the rear is now all wired up uh, as far as the main powering harness goes. The next step would be just to continue routing this uh, cable once you have it here uh, along the side of the car. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to remove um, this sill strip, but I'm going to remove this sill right here, run it along the B pillar, up into here, under this sill uh, cover it here, and then up into the glove box. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Alright, so we've done quite a bit since the last clip, um, so I ran the main harness cable, uh, right now it's all very loose, nothing's really connected, but I just ran it up along the passenger side of the car, up into here, and now once you get here, um, 
there's five total connections that you're gonna have to make. Um, two are very um, tricky and annoying. Um, what I've done is I've removed the glove box just to allow um, just more room. Um, I highly recommend doing this. It's very, very simple to do actually. Um, what you need to do is there are um, two, I guess, hooks that hook onto the glove box. One right here and one on this side, as you can see. And then there's just these little clips. Let me try to find one uh, right here. Um, they'll be sitting like this. So if you can get a flat blade in there and just pry it, um, it'll come off. And then if you come back under here, um, and I apologize, this is a very, very tight space to film, um, but if you come down under here, there's uh, two um, bolts that you gotta take off, and they both have washers, um, like this. And then once you do that, the just be careful, the glove box will all come off and just fall on your face. So if you need a more detailed explanation on that, go watch the um, tutorial we have on the channel. Uh, for the Euro Dash, um, part of that process you have to take off the glove box. That's actually what I used um, to take it off. So, once you have the glove box off, you'll have access to the fuse panel. So, the fuse panel comes down, just twist these uh, little knobs, um, make them both horizontal actually, and once you do that, this will come down. So, the, um, the shorter of the cables, of all the five cables, is going to be this red and yellow cable. This is going to have to plug in um, to the back of here on fuse 21. That's your PDC fuse. You can see there's a 5 amp fuse in there right now. Um, I found it's easiest if you pull on this on both sides and this whole panel actually comes off. This is your fuse panel. And if you twist it around, it's all very, very tight back here. If you twist it around, be careful with the cables. You can see where I was able to pin my uh, wire. Um, it can kind of be finicky. Um, if you look back here, you're never going to be able to see it on camera, but right along this um, bridge right here, there's numbers, and they correspond to twice of what's on the front. So back there, look for number 42. It's written really, really small, but that's going to correspond to number, or pin 21. I don't know why that is, but I've looked at all these numbers, and every number back there corresponds to double what the corresponding slot is. So yeah, just get that um, cable into slot 42 back here. Um, press it in pretty good. Um, just be careful you don't uh, mess it up. But once it's in there, uh, you'll be good. Uh, the next cable that you have to run, and this is gonna be probably the most difficult, it is the most difficult, is this gray, it'll be a gray, white with red, or sorry, gray, white with yellow specks on it. This camera's not gonna pick it up, but it's this one right here. And this is gonna have to go back under here to the K-Bus connector. If you take your glove box off, it'll be a lot easier. You're gonna have to get down here. It's very tight. Um, it's gonna be difficult, but you're gonna have to do the same thing you did uh, pushing in this pin 42. You're gonna have to do it down here. Once you're down here, you're gonna find a block, um, a block of a bunch of cables, and it's gonna be above this cable harness and above this cable harness. There's going to be a bunch of cables going in and out. Um, the one that you need to find, it's going to be, look for a bunch of cables that all look exactly like this one. Um, so it'll be a bunch of cables. They're all going to be gray, um, white with yellow specks on it. Once you find that specific harness, you're just going to have to do the same thing. Push this pin in on any empty slot. Um, my car had four or five empty slots, so I just picked one and I got it in. So like I said, it's very tight. Um, one thing I could recommend is the um, the main cable harness um, that you're gonna have to try to access. There's a bunch of wires that you're not gonna really need to use. Um, I found it was really helpful. Get a zip tie, zip tie them all out the way. I attached the zip tie onto this white box just so I can have more clearance. And then once I was able to find the right slot, I used this uh, long, <laughs> I don't really know what this is, but this long metal rod, I guess we'll say. And once I got it in the right pin, I just push it in there, and it, it's, it's in there now. So, um, that's definitely going to be the hardest part of this. Um, it's going to be tight. It's, it might take you a couple hours. It took me all yesterday afternoon to find it, um, but it's back here. Look for 
um, like I said, a jumbo of wires all connected to one connector that are the same exact color as yours. Um, I hope that's a good enough explanation. Um, I was just going off what the BMW tutorial thing had, um, but it was very unclear, so yeah. Um, the next three uh, cables that you're going to need to run um, are the front gong speaker um, connector and there's two pins that are going to have to go behind the center console PDC switch panel. So um, they're going to be here. So like I said, uh, the way you can get them up into here, it's actually pretty simple. So it's going to be best to remove your navigation screen. Um, this is going to give you access, um, uh, a lot more access to the um, switch panel. Um, so the way I found easiest to do that, I just removed this trim pa this trim piece right here, um, and once I did that, I uh, was able to remove, there are, if you look up here, there's one, two, uh, three, four, and five um, Phillips screws. Remove those. Once you remove those, the screen will come out, so I'm going to go ahead and take it out right now and show you guys. So once you do that, uh, you'll find uh, these two cable harnesses, they're the same kind of style connectors as a lot of the connectors in this car. There's just this arm that needs to be depressed by this little pin right here. Um, and once you do that, get those out of the way. Um, push your HVAC controls just from the back, get your hand in there, uh, push it out, and it'll come out. There's just clips that hold it in. Um, once you do that, I'm actually going to, let's see, I'm actually going to unplug this from the back. There's I believe three connectors are going to have to unplug to get this out of the way. So let me go ahead and do that. So I just went ahead and just set it to the side here. Uh, it's just dangling. Uh, just be careful with it. You could unplug everything. You can see once you have that nav screen out, uh, I don't know if you can see there's that hole right there where that light is. Uh, you can just run your cables. There's my hand. You can just run your cables, the front uh, gong speaker harness, as well as the two pins through there. Uh, this is where my gong speaker uh, pin uh, is coming out of. So uh, once you get it here, um, just let it dangle for a second. We're going to be dealing with this uh, switch panel. Uh, like I said, you're going to need to get one that has a PDC slot. So same thing as the HVAC unit, just push from the back, it'll come out. And uh, let me go ahead and unplug this harness. Alright, once you take the, the harness out of the module, you're going to end up with this connector. Um, if you see there's a tab right here, um, where there's that little brown uh, arm sticking up. If you um, take a little flat blade, uh, pull that up, and then this whole harness is going to slide out. Once you do that, you're going to have to pin um, your two pins into the switch right here. So uh, the way I did that was um, actually for pin 8. So yeah, so pin 8 is going to be uh, the uh, brown with yellow specks on it. Pin 9 is going to be your brown with the blue um stripes on it. Uh, you'll be able to tell once you have your two pins. So again, pin 9 is the brown and blue, pin 8 is the brown with yellow specks. Um, so just slide the pins in there. Make sure you run uh, your pins through this little slot right here. Don't make the mistake I did. They were just here. And once you go to plug this back in, it's not going to work. So just make sure you run your two pins through this slot here, plug them in the connector, uh, and then slide this black piece back onto the brown um, connector. Um, and the last thing that you're going to need to your gong speaker. So the way I was able to do that is you're going to have to run it from here and it's going to have to come out under here in this kick panel. Um, so the way this kick panel comes off, it's very simple. There are, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four uh, Phillips head screws and along with this little uh, tab at the back, a little tab at the back that you have to turn, uh, I believe it's 90 degrees clockwise. Once you do that, this whole foot panel will drop down. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys that right now. To remove the kick panel, you also have to remove this piece right here. Uh, there's just one Phillips head screw that holds it in and then it just slides uh, out towards the back of the car. So just put your hand on it, uh, slide it back and it should come off and then that'll allow you to remove this uh, panel here. So once you remove those uh, Phillips screws, uh, along with this uh, little tap at the end, just turn it, like I said, uh, 90 degrees and it'll pop down. Um, I'm going to pull this. Um, 
you can see the gong speaker is up there. You can see where my connector is plugged into it. Um, so just if you look at the speaker, there's going to be two open ports. Um, I don't believe it matters, but if you put the black one on the bottom and the white one on the top, it's going to be the left uh, open uh, connector. So again, this is it right here. Uh, so once you get that plugged in, uh, you should be good. Just go ahead and put this panel back up. That's your front gong speaker. Um, the way I was able to route this cable from the uh, where the navigation screen sits down to here is I use a little coat hanger. Um, just make a straight route out of it um, or any little kind of thin metal piece. Um, and I, from here, uh, I shined a light actually from the top. Uh, so go to your navigation screen up here um, and then shine a light down towards this direction and then if you come down here you'll be able to see where there's a tiny little hole, tiny little slot where you can kind of fit something through. Uh, it's a little bit of distance so like I said I used a um, coat hanger and I just ran it from here up through there where I saw the light and then it ended up coming out up here. Um, once I did that I just taped this cable to that and then uh, once it was taped, I just fished the coat hanger back down from this side, and then that ran the cable through to the foot well. And then, like I said, once you're down here, um, it's going to be this right here. This is your gong speaker. Uh, I used this connector right here, which is, if the white one's on top, it's the left side. I believe it's a T4 pin, but... Alright, so once you have that uh, front gong speaker connected, um, just go ahead and reattach the panel up here. Um, and then once you do all that, the system should work. One thing, uh, I had one issue with the power cable. Um, it ended up being a little bit too short. Um, so it came out from here, and then where this um, red and yellow cable um, comes out is a little bit too short. So um, I had to just connect an extension. I just got this cable, I had this laying around, so um, right now it's barely connected, um, but I'll probably solder this on together, but um, you might run into that. I don't know if I just had some extra hanging in the trunk, but I tried to pull as much as I can out of here, and it just wasn't working. It would end right here. So, uh, like I said, you might have to do that, um, just splice together a extension on there. Um, but yeah, so the system now go ahead and what I've done here is I have all my sensors um, here are the four front sensors uh, and here are the four here it is the four rear sensors and um, go ahead and take your front cable harness which is the one with the blue connector plug it into the PDC module go ahead and take the rear um, harness which is the white connector and plug it into the module once everything's all plugged in go ahead and plug in your sensors respectively to the harnesses um, ignition on PDC button and we're getting some some beeps and stuff um, note that your car should if you put it in reverse also initiate the uh, park distance control so now everything works um, like I said before, the most difficult part is going to be the two cables uh, that you're going to have to, the two pins that you have to connect down here, one to this PDC switch, which actually isn't that hard. Um, just note that this does slide backwards. It'll give you a lot more clearance. Um, and then the other uh, pin, which is the white, gray, and yellow uh, cable. So like I said, just tips for that is just come under here. It's going to be a lot clearer once you get down here. Find the harness that has, they're all going to be the same exact color as the cable you're trying to pin. Find an empty slot and just push it in. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reassemble everything. Go ahead and put the glove box back in. Um, the rear deck and everything, I started putting it back together. Uh, but it all comes um, back together just like you took it apart. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and uh, yeah, the way I'm going to route this cable, I'm just going to clean it up a little bit now. It's going to go under... Um, the sill right here like I told you uh, under the B pillar same thing in the front and just kind of hide it and make it look uh, nice and clean um, this is kind of the part one for this um, this is all gonna be in one video but the next uh, two things we have to do is um, actually mount these sensors everywhere so um, rear bumper is gonna have to come off the front bumper is gonna have to come off if we come up here uh, you'll see that the front bumper uh, if you've seen an E39 with PDC, the, the PDC sensors actually sit behind this trim piece. 
So I think one goes here and one goes somewhere around here. So I do have this trim piece with the PDC hole cut out. This bumper is a Euro spec bumper. It does not have the headlight washers. It's an OEM BMW bumper, uh, but it is not the PDC bumper. Um, so what I'm gonna have to do is drill holes. And I know a lot of you guys might not like that, but hear me out. If you drill the holes up here behind this trim piece, it's just plastic. The sensors have to sit in here. If you drill the holes and you put your um, your trim piece, it covers up the holes and you're not gonna be ever able to tell that this is a non-PDC bumper. Um, it's a different story with the back because if you know the sensors, um, one sits, I believe, in the corner right here, and then two are in the middle. So if you were just to drill here and try to put a sensor, it wouldn't work. Um, I have, think I found a way around that. Um, I'm going to be using an existing uh, trim piece with PDC cutouts, and there's a little bracket that this PD sensors actually sit in. I'm going to try to drill this and mount the bracket from the back. Um, and then put the sensor through the back so um, depending on how it comes out I'll leave it like that if it comes out good if it doesn't come out good then for the rear you're gonna need to get a rear bumper with the PDC hole cut out have it painted um, so that can get a little pricey obviously but I'm gonna try my method first hopefully it comes out good um, but I'll let you guys know so for now um, I'm just gonna leave it here put everything back together and then uh, we'll get started on the front sensor uh, wiring Alright, so the next step is to route the front sensor harness. Uh, this requires removing the front bumper. Uh, we do have a DIY on the channel on how to do that. I'm going to go ahead and just give a brief overview. So first, uh, you want to loosen uh, your lug nuts, jack up the car, put it on stands, uh, remove the front wheels, and then you're going to have to remove the belly pan and your uh, front lower fender liners. Uh, which are these right here. Uh, just be careful with these, they're pretty expensive now. I think they're like over $200 just for these little plastic pieces here. So um, go ahead and remove those. Um, unplug your fog light bulbs right here, both sides. And then don't forget also on the passenger side, uh, as well as the fog light, there is the uh, temperature sensor that you do have to unplug, which sits in the actual fender liner. This is just on the passenger side. Um, yeah, so once you get here, uh, the next step is going to be to remove the two T50 uh, Torx um, bolts that go up into the bumper through the carrier. So there's one on that side and one on this side. And then I believe that should be it. And then once you have those out, what you want to do is, this is easier with two people, but have a person on each side and just have them, the bumper just kind of slides out. It's just sitting on little um, guides on either side, um, so it just pulls out. Um, I'm going to try to do it just by myself. Make sure you put some protection on the ground just in case you do drop it uh, when you're taking it off so it doesn't get scratched up. I just have some blankets down here. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll get back to you guys. Alright, so the bumper was off and it was um, surprisingly very easy. Uh, I've had this bumper off before because I did replace it. This is a Euro spec bumper without the headlight washers. But um, basically those two Torx bolts are the only thing that holds it in. And then I was able to just slide. I did it by myself. It wasn't too hard. I actually just uh, sat down here and then reached over here, pulled this side out, left it in place, did the same thing over here. And then once it was kind of loose, I just pulled it towards me, uh, lifted it. Be very careful with the bumper. It's a weird shape. You don't want to scratch this. You don't want to hit something with it. Um, but yeah, so the next step, we are going to have to be replacing this carrier. Uh, I did get one from a parts car on eBay. Um, it was about $40, I think, with shipping. It was like $70. So not too bad. You can buy this new. Um, I think it's about $200 new. But I didn't really see it at point two. It's just, it's literally just metal. So. Um, the way this is held in is there's a bunch of pop rivets and um, so there's one here, one here. These will be removed through the bottom of the bumper and I'm blanking on how you remove these. Let me get back to you guys. So we've got the bumper upside down right now. Um, so the way that carrier is removed, like I said, there's four pop rivets on the underside. One here, one here, one here, one there. Um, uh, Use a pop rivet tool that'll probably help. Uh, I just put some tape here just to make sure that this isn't scratched up. Uh, and then there are um, four more under the 
bumper trim. This kind of looks weird. If it does, it's because the bumper's upside down. But go ahead and remove this trim piece here. So it's just these trim pieces that are on the bumper. Just use uh, a plastic tool. Just be careful. Pop them out. Um, they're pretty easy. Um, and then the next step, uh, it probably just comes out. So once you have those rivets out, the metal carrier will just probably come out. So I'm going to go ahead and remove it right now. And I'll let you guys know. So once you have uh, all those clips taken out, go ahead and pull the metal carrier out. It just comes straight out. Um, it helps to kind of bend this upwards a little bit, and then it slides out pretty cleanly. So this grill doesn't have to come off. You can just leave it on. I'm going to go ahead and set the bumper aside, but I can show you guys here what the difference is. So the top carrier is the one that came out of my car. This is a car with no PDC, and then the bottom one is the one I bought off eBay. You can see the only difference is these cutouts right here. Um, to allow space for the PDC sensors. You could just go ahead and cut your original one if you want to go ahead and do that, but I just figured it's easier to buy a new one. Um, one thing I didn't notice is they have the same exact part number. This is the one without the PDC cutouts. The part number is kind of fading away, but it ends with three eight, or it ends with 172386, and so does the one that I got off eBay. So I don't know what that's about, but uh, it does have the cutouts, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in the bumper now and go ahead and install those clips. And I'll let so along with a uh, new bumper carrier, you're going to need new trim pieces that have cutouts for the PDC. Like I said, this is where uh, the PD sensors will sit. So um, I got these right here. Um, the next step actually before you do put in your metal carrier, uh, we're going to have to drill holes in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the trim pieces on and I'm going to see where the PDC cutouts should be. Um, there's a circle right here, I don't know if that's it, but I'm going to put the trim piece on, see where the holes are going to need to be cut, and then I I'm going to go ahead and just drill it. Um, I think here is where we're going to have to drill, but I'll let you know. So, we've gone ahead and drilled the bumper. As you can see, those are the two holes that I made. Um, I just used this cutting bit right here. Um, it's not the cleanest, obviously, um, but if we go ahead and... Uh, put this on and do a little test fit. Oh, also, so the bumper, this is a non-PDC bumper. If you happen to be using your, your bumper that's not a PDC um, bumper, um, they already have this side cut out for you, so um, this side goes in fine, so this is the only one that you're going to have to cut out. Um, but if you go ahead and fit it here, there we go. I mean, it looks exactly like a bumper with the PDC cut out to wood. Um, you cannot tell that it, you know, it's been cut. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and do the other side right now, and uh, I'll let you guys know how that goes. So I just brought the bumper inside, but um, go ahead and install the trim pieces as well as the bumper carrier, the metal part. Um, it goes in just like it came out. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, one thing to note, I found it it was easier to put the carrier in and then install the the exterior trim pieces as well as the sensors. But here are my sensors. Um, you can see they kind of only go in one way. There's a little notch in the actual trim piece that matches up with a notch on the sensors. And uh, so this is how they go in. Alright, so now we're going to move on. Now that the front bumper is all prepared and ready, um, we're going to move on to wiring the harness throughout the car to the trunk from right here uh, like I said to the trunk so the way we're gonna do this is it's actually not that difficult from what I can tell right now um, so the bumpers off obviously um, we're gonna run it starting from the driver's side this is the way um, the BMW um, tutorial uh, lists to do so um, you're going to have a bunch of these connectors. Obviously, since we're starting and running it on the driver's side, the longest of... First off, here are the connectors for the PDC sensors. There's four of them. Uh, they're all different lengths. They all end or come out of the main harness at different places, obviously, because there some sensors are on this side, some sensors are on this side. So the longest uh, cable is going to be the one that's going to be the furthest to the passenger side. Uh, so right now I'm just... I have it dangling just over this little support right here. Um, I'm going to worry about this after I get the main cable up into the engine. The way we're going to do that is 
let me get a light out. Um, we're gonna follow this cable um, right here. If you look right under there, you see that little opening where there's a bunch of cables coming out? Run our connector through there. And then once you do that, it'll come out right, uh, right, sorry, the lighting, it's a tough angle, right there, if you can see it. And then once it comes out there, it's gonna run up this main harness right here, and then it'll get in and hopefully uh, we'll be able to run it through the firewall uh, through here. So I removed the engine air filter housing um, on the driver's side as well as the uh, driver's side cabin air filter housing. Um, it's pretty simple to do for the cabin air filter. There's just um, some clips on this piece right here. As you can see there's three clips. Undo those clips, just lift them up. Um, and go ahead, there's one more clip that's going to be mounted to the stud that's coming out of the chassis. Um, and then once you do that, it'll just kind of lift up and out of place. Uh, the engine air filter for the driver's side, it's very simple. There is one uh, bolt actually that goes into right there. You undo that, it's a 10 millimeter, I believe. And then loosen this band clamp down here. You're going to need a flat blade uh, to do this. It's right there. Um, and then once you're there, you can remove the engine air filter housing, just kind of give you more room to work. Um, I went ahead and routed the cable uh, under here. It's going to be really tough to see. Right there you can see that opening, that comes out into here. And then once you get it out, it's behind and under the headlight. If you want more access, you could remove the headlight. I was able to do it without removing it. It's not that difficult. Um, but here's my wires. You can see it's kind of just sprung right now all over the engine. But I routed it up into here, and once you have the cabin air filter housing out, you can see where we're going to try to get into the car. So, uh, remove the, like we did before, remove the little trim piece here under in the driver's footwell area. There's just four Phillips screws, like I said before, and you remove the side piece as well. Once you do that, you'll come under here, and you can see where... All those cables are coming out that's the little tube that we're gonna have to run our cables through um, it's it's tight into the car it's attached to the, the actual chassis of the car the way I was able to remove it was from in here I kind of just pried it back towards me and then I was able to get it free and then once you do that that same tube corresponds to right under the brake booster you can see where all my wires are um, there is a lot of electrical tape that they use to just insulate this and make sure it doesn't get damaged, which is a good thing. But for our purpose, we're gonna have to remove it. As you can see, I kind of had to tear some out. Um, so they're kind of just open right now, but I'll go ahead and re-tape re them all up once we're done. Um, and then you gotta, you have to modify the actual rubber boot that all the cables go through. There's just not enough room for your, your harness to get through. So I had to actually cut it open. What I plan on doing now is once it's all through, I'm just gonna go back and just seal it with electrical tape, just make sure it's as tight as I can get it. That's as best as I'm gonna be able to do. There's just absolutely no way that the harness is gonna be able to fit through um, without me modifying it. As you can see, it's kinda, it's a tight spot. The lighting is really bad, but once you get here, you'll kinda know what I'm talking about. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, but yeah, like I said, you're gonna have to kinda modify the rubber part of the harness where the cables are running through. Now when you're doing this, be very careful. Um, I used a scissor actually and, and a knife, but just be careful because there's a lot of wires and it's in tight area. Just be careful, do not nick one of those wires. And I, I caution that, be very, very careful um, when you're kind of making more room for yourself. Um, but see what you can do. Uh, I was able to just do it my way. Uh, I kind of modified it and got the cable. Right now it's running through. As you can see, it's just coming out of here. Um, also, um, I just like I did previously, I this is the blue harness connector. As you can see right now, it's fully black. Just like we did before, I removed it from its housing, the blue housing, um, when we were running the rear, uh, when we were running the power cable in the back. So go ahead and just make it like this, just so it's smaller, it's a lot easier to run, and then we'll go ahead and put it back in the harness uh, later. So, um, the next step, I believe... I'm gonna try to probably put the front bumper back on 
um, because it's kind of getting late, I'm running out of time, so I'll probably put the front bumper on and I'll just leave this hanging out in, t in the actual car right here, um, and maybe I'll run it or I'll run it at a later time, but um, we're going to try to do the front uh, bumper right now. So. so I've gone ahead and wired the front sensors. Um, the way I'm doing it is I, I still have the cable loose in the car. I'm going to put this on first and then if I need more cable, I'll pull some back. But I think there's more than enough cable from what I just looked at. Um, there's no really way to secure this with a fastener uh, that I can see. So what I'm going to do is any excess, I just ran it under the carrier and then through to the sensors. Plug in all your sensors. Make sure you have, make sure they're not super tight like this because you want to be able to if one of the sensors goes bad in the future, if you want to just remove the trim pieces, you want to have some extra wire just in case. So I'm going to give myself some extra room, tuck it down under here, and then there's some holes I'm going to try to zip tie and just make it as tight as I can. Um, but again, not too tight. So go ahead and run your harness. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and put the bumper back on. There's no real way BMW says to, to make sure this cable goes. Uh, they just have it in the diagram going behind this tube. So I've kind of just tucked it behind here. Um, maybe I'll zip tie it to something, maybe back here. Uh, but just try to make it as clean as you can. Um, and I think we'll be good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the bumper back on. Right now, make sure you plug in all your uh, sensors, make sure they click, and uh, we should be good to go. So go ahead and one more time, um, I would, if you're using the same exact port that I am, you can see it's the one with, with a bunch of electrical tape right there. This is the one that comes out under the driver's footwell area. So, when putting this back together, I would recommend going on the inside and just pushing it into place. I used a bunch of different tools. I had to push a lot on this thing. Uh, and eventually I was able to get it to seat 100% properly. Just make sure, I had to cut it open like I said because it was too tight. Just the rubber boot, not the wires of course. Uh, so I cut the rubber boot open and then once I had that open I laid my cable uh, along it and into the car. And then now that it's inside the car I went ahead and electrical taped it. Um, so it's, it's pretty tight now. I went over it a bunch, probably more than I needed to. But just to make sure, as you can see, it's right there. But now it's in the car. Um, we can go ahead and reassemble everything here. I don't believe we're going to need to do anything else. No, nope. when it comes out under here, you can see right there uh, where that white little paper is. That's actually the tag on the wire. That's where it comes out. Now what I did is I kind of loosened this dead pedal a little bit. Um, and by doing that, um, I was able to run it up under where this trunklet switch is. You can't even really see it anymore. Um, and then down along this rubber trim uh, and into here. And the way we're going to run it along the car is kind of how we did it before. Same idea, just remove the two sill uh, trim pieces. One here, which I've removed. And one which I have not removed yet, which is this one. I'm going to run it under there. And uh, the way I'm going to run it into the trunk, uh, where the PDC module is, um, go ahead and remove the rear bench. And then once you remove the rear bench, it's very simple. There's just one clip there, one clip there. Just lift up, put your hand under it, and it'll come up. That's all there is to it. And then it kind of just lifts out. I'm going to run it uh, along the bench back here. I'm going to try to make it neat. There's actually another cable run here that uh, I had to run, which is the auxiliary cable, which is under the carpet. You can kind of see it right there. So I'm just going to clean it up a little bit, run it across here, and then once we get to that side, we're going to run it into the trunk to the PDC module, and then we'll be good to go. Um, then just put everything back together. I have yet to put back my front bumper. I'm waiting for help to come so I can do this. Um, putting it back on requires two people. Um, I try to do it by myself. It's just, it's just too hard to balance it and try to get it on. Uh, but taking it off, you can do it with one person. So I'm going to go ahead and try to put everything back together up here and then we'll continue running this cable uh, to the module. So I've gone ahead and reassembled everything. Um, go ahead, put back your belly pan, fender liners, don't forget your to plug in the fog lights as well as the temperature sensor on the passenger side. Um, cabin air filters, engine air filter, um, yeah, I believe that's it. Uh, go ahead and put your bumper back on, and then in here, let's get some light. 
Uh, I've gone ahead and run the cable, like I said, along the driver's side of the car. Um, gotten it here. Um, I had to go, I had to remove the B pillar this time because the cable is a bit thick. So I removed it and just tucked it under the carpet. Um, same thing here. And then I ran it across the back seat. And then once it's over here, um, went ahead and removed this trim piece, just half of it partially. Um, there's just one pop rivet, two pop rivets that I had to remove. And then uh, this carpet also has a pop rivet right here. Go ahead and remove that, and then that gives you access to fold this back. And then what I did was I got a coat hanger, and then I just shoved it through here. And then that ended up coming out in the trunk where the PDC module is. And then the clip got cut off a little bit, but basically what you want to do is you want to run the front harness cable um, through to the trunk, like I said, then plug it into the PDC module. The blue uh, connector goes into the blue slot on the module. Um, and then that should be it in terms of running the front harness. Um, and then that, all that's left to do will be to run the rear harness. This is the last step in completing this project. So the only thing left to do is route the rear sensors into the rear bumper. Um, one way to do this is to replace the bumper since you need a hole here and a hole here for the two center sensors. Um, I'm gonna try a different way. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But um, the first step is gonna be to remove the rear bumper. Um, and there's a DIY on the channel on how to do that. So I'm not gonna go too in depth on how to remove your rear bumper, but that's what I'm working on now. But yeah, first step, go ahead and remove the rear bumper and uh, we'll go on to the next step after. So once you have the rear bumper off, the next step is going to be to drill a hole right here. Um, this will allow us to run our PDC harness for the rear sensors from the trunk out of here, and then later on attach to the bumper. This is the tool I'm using. Um, it's a three, one and three quarter inch. Um, BMW TIS specifies it should be 40 millimeters. This is about 44. Um, this is just what I can get on hand, but um, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Drill a hole right here. I'll let you guys know how it goes. So I'm filming this after the job has been finished, but basically what you want to do is go ahead and remove your rear bumper. Then uh, in the right corner, you have to drill a hole like I said. Here's a picture of that hole that I drilled. And then uh, once you do that, you can run the rear uh, PDC harness from the trunk and um, fit it through that hole that you just made. And uh, like I said, there's two ways that you can go about doing this. Um, you can one, just get a new rear bumper and have it painted. Um, there's, I'll include the part number for that bumper, but basically that bumper does come with the PDC holes already come out. So the two in the center um, will be already there for you. Um, as of me making this video, those bumpers are around $800 from BMW, uh, plus any shipping, and then you have to get it painted. Um, so I decided to try to do it my own way and basically just drill the back here. Um, it came out okay. Um, right now I'm happy with it. Uh, it's definitely not perfect, but if you stand like right here, <laughs> you can't really tell a huge difference. Um, but basically the way I was able to get it done is these uh, trim pieces here. Um, on the other side of this, so you can see the PDC sensor is in the middle. Um, they actually fit into these brackets um, that are glued onto the actual trim piece. So what I was able to do was I just got a used um, trim piece, actually two of them, and then I removed that bracket uh, that was just held on by glue. Um, it takes a bit of force, but I was able to get it off. And then those brackets, I just went ahead and um, glued them back onto the holes that I cut. Uh, to the bumper um, and you're gonna have to measure this out it's nice to have a reference um, PDC uh, or somebody that has a PDC rear bumper so they can measure um, the distances of these holes um, I can provide you those distances um, they're not exact but they're pretty close to what a regular uh, PDC bumper would have um, and basically to, to drill these holes I use a stepper uh, drill bit um, and I'll include all the sizes for you down in the description um, but once you drill those holes, I took those brackets that I got from a used trim piece and just glued it onto this bumper uh, from the back. Keep in mind, this is all done with the rear bumper removed. One thing to note, this is a non-PDC rear bumper, like I said before. Um, I did not have to drill any holes for the side pieces. So this piece and the other corner, the 
this bumper already had the openings for that, so no holes had to be drilled, just the two center ones. And then once you have those brackets installed, um, I was able to just install the sensors and uh, run the harness. Um, it's very simple, once you get it out of here, you just have to run it across the top of the bumper um, and then plug in all your sensors, reattach the bumper, and then uh, there you go. Yeah, so rear PDC has now been installed on this car, as well as the front PDC. Uh, this whole process took me quite a while to complete, but uh, if we come around here, uh, we have the front PDC sensors installed. Go ahead, show you that it's fully functional. Ignition, PDC, uh, switch on, and uh, the PDC does function, so I'll just go. Right now it's not sensing anything, but if you were to come here, you might not be able to hear it, but it's beeping inside. And then the rear sensors. So there you go. Um, so the system works and I'm very happy with it. Now keep in mind, um, you can purchase these sensors brand new from BMW. They will cost you an arm and a leg. They're very expensive. I'm not sure exactly what they are um right now but i remember when i last checked they're around maybe 100 150 dollars a piece and keep in mind you do need eight of these so what i would recommend you do um at least in my case i was able to find some sensors some aftermarket sensors and as of now they're working beautifully um, these are about i believe maybe 20 bucks a piece um they're significantly cheaper than the BMW one so I mean if they start giving me problems in the future maybe I'll think about getting like a used set of OEM ones but as of now uh, these are working perfectly. Another reason why I decided to go with aftermarket sensors is also the rear here. These two center uh, PDC sensors need to be painted to match the car so these ones I was able to find aftermarket like I said on eBay painted to match this car which is anthracite metallic so um, yeah I would, I would try to look online on eBay other websites see what you can find but um, as of now, for me, these sensors are working perfect. All right, guys, that should be it for the DIY. Let me know if anybody has any questions. Um, I spent a lot of time researching all this and figuring out what parts I needed. And uh, I'm happy to say it came out pretty nice. So I have now fully functioning PDC on a car that did not come with PDC. So um, yeah, let me know if anybody has any questions and uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video.